So, Josh, uh, real quick, as you just explained that, what is an allele? Right. So the best way I can explain it would be to think of alleles like floors on a building. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the higher up you go, the more visible that floor is. Okay. So if you've got a gene that's on the 10th floor allele, and you've got a gene that's on the 5th floor allele, and you're looking at it from the sky, you're going to see that 10th floor allele first. Great analogy. Got you. Yep. So a good example of that would be with comb types. So Polish have a comb that's a V-shape. People sometimes call it the devil horns. Uh, the technical term for it is duplex. Okay. So the V-comb is on one allele. Every other single comb type that exists is on a completely separate allele. So when you cross a V-comb bird to a straight comb bird, both comb types try to show themselves at the same time. And what you end up with is a double single comb. So you have basically two blades instead of one. Okay. So, Josh, tell me this. When you breed that duplex comb, mm -hmm. and say you breed it to a single comb, yep. what most likely is going to express? So what will happen is if both birds are pure for their respective comb, so you've got a pure line that throws nothing but straight combs and a pure line that throws nothing but V combs. The resulting offspring should show both traits, but they've combined. So basically, instead of having one single comb straight down the middle of the head, you're going to have one off to the side and one off to the side. Looks like a set of moose antlers or uh, there's a breed called a Sicilian buttercup that has a comb that's very similar. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty wild looking comb, but oh. the funny thing is, yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is where V comb is on a separate allele, um, it will do the same thing with P comb. If you do it with a rose comb, what happens is instead of having one spike on the back, it will, it should have three. Wow. Okay. So, so Josh, tell me this. With the alleles and those mm -hmm. characteristics. Now, how does how does the allele apply to color? Like, what other things does does the allele apply to, and does or does it apply to every single thing that has to do with the chicken within itself? Oh, absolutely. So the alleles, uh, basically every physical characteristic you can see is going to be on some allele somewhere. Okay. Now. For example, with game chickens, they have every, what I, what I refer to as a base color, is the names for the alleles. Uh, there's extended black, that is the most dominant of all of them. The next one is called birchen, which you and I know as brown-red. Okay. And then after that comes wheaten, after that comes duckwing, which you may... Uh, Duckwing is basically your your average uh, hatch colored bird. Okay. And then it goes down from there in order of dominance. So when a guy crosses a hatch to a brown red, if that brown red's a pure brown red, the offspring are most likely going to resemble a brown red more than they are the hatch. So when you make a brown red cross to a hatch and they look like hatch, that's because your brown red already had hatch in it somewhere in the line. Okay, Josh, so, so, so explain to us, uh, because not everybody has seen a hatch before, just to let you know. You know, you have guys yep, like yep, yep. on the islands and stuff that don't have. So what does a hatch look like? Like the colors? Right. So, so the hatch, um, and when I'm referring to hatch, I'm talking about uh, the typical red and black males, uh, they resemble the ancestor of all chickens, the red jungle fowl. 
So some of your guys in Asia might be familiar with that. But it is a reddish yellow, orange neck, black breast, and the wing is broken to three color parts. You've got a red shoulder, then a black band that should shine blue, and then you've got that brown in the flights. The saddle would be red and the tail would be black. Now on the female, that would be a straw colored neck with uh, black in the centers, that rust red breast, they call it salmon, the brown back with the black tail. Okay. All right. So guys, he just broke down. So y'all guys know what colors he's talking about. Um, and hopefully, uh, Josh, you didn't lose your, lose your train of thought, but I wanted you to break that down so they can kind of follow along. Um, so you breed in the hatch with the brown red and just go ahead and explain it to us one more time. Pretty much what's going to be shown from that from that uh, breeding. Right. So being as how the brown red allele, the birchen allele, as it is technically called, is dominant over Wheaton and Duckwing then what would happen is the offspring would resemble a brown red. There's, there's a little bit slight difference that you can tell if you look close at them, but at a glance, they're going to look a lot like a brown red. Okay. And a lot of those brown red families you see out there that they might have light legs or light colored eyes, they've got some other blood in them somewhere because then when you cross those two say a hatch or a white hackle or something like that uh and your birds come out looking light that just tells you your brown red already had light colored blood in it got you got you now josh what i'm gonna do is if you can explain why two strain combs can't make a pea comb a lot of people need to know this can you is that something yep. you can answer josh okay yep absolutely so the straight comb is the ancestral comb type of all chickens. It is what they came out of the jungle with. Now, combs on that allele are actually dictated by two sets of genes. So there's four genes total to make the comb. Okay. The straight comb is two sets of recessive genes. So the only way you can see anything that's recessive is if it's pure for it. Okay. Okay. It's plain and it's plain and simple. If it's a recessive trait, you cannot see it unless it's pure. So two straight comb birds, you should not get anything else out of them. Got you. And if you do, then that mean they, they got something on their leo somewhere down the line, huh? No. Um that 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 uh, what it basically means is your hen wasn't clean or a rooster jumped over into the other pen or your kids messing with your brood pens when you're at work. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know all of those are possibilities that you just named. <laughs> OK, we have one question, which this is a question that we always get. So uh, one of the viewers from the Facebook page, oh, I, I, I can't see the name. Uh, just, just asks, uh, what determines pure? Like, what is your what is your definition, Josh, of pure? Yep. So there's different variations on 